Let's get into the conversations now on our first discussion. Now, ahead of the 2023 presidential election, more than 20 aspirants have declared their intention to contest for Nigeria's highest political office. As the days go by, more aspirants are expected to join the race for Aso Rock. A lot of these personalities are eminently qualified for the job, hence setting the stage for a tough contest. Soon, political parties will conduct their presidential primaries and con candidates will emerge to slog it out at the polls next year. Which candidate will win the heart of Nigerians and deliver the much-needed dividends of democracy? These are the questions on the lips of everyone right now, you know, looking at things from different perspectives. Now, with me in the studio to provide answers to these questions and even more is political analyst Dan Akinlami. Now, Dan, good morning. It's good to have you join me. Good morning, Mike. Thank you very much. Great. Now, you have contested for the office of the president before. So when it comes to being there, what a candidate thinks, what, what makes him, you know, push for, you know, I want to become this, and what goes into consultation and all of that, you have done all of that before, and you have a better understanding. Before we get into all of the people contesting, share with us from that perspective, what really is the push that makes anyone say, I want to contest to the level where you want to sacrifice, you want to give, you want to do all of that? Well, I think um, as it is right now, mm -hmm with this build up to 2023 election, the stake seems to be very high. Mm. And what really uh, contributed to this uh, kind of uh, pressure we are seeing now in the run up mm. is the fact that we have some septic general candidates who perhaps have this 2023 as their last chance to run. Mm. Then aside from that, there is agitation for power to come to the southern part of Nigeria after being in the north, assuming it will complete by eight years now next year. Mm -hmm. Then the reality is this, especially in the case of people like uh, Professor Yemi Oshibaju. Mm -hmm. Yemi Oshibaju is 65 now. If it does not jump into this race now at 65. If somebody else from the South emerge as the president, is likely to spend eight years. Hmm. And after that eight years, there is likelihood for power to return to the North. So you had 16 years for him to have another bright chance as he's having right now. Hmm. It will probably be 81 then. So, so these are some of the factors that are coming together to drive the people that are jumping into this race mm -hmm. now. Then apart from that, we have people who believe they have a lifelong ambition. They've been nursing this for more than 30 years or 35 years. And this is the best chance. They've supported several people. They've stepped down for other people. And they consider that this is their only chance. They are also in the race too. But we also have people who perhaps all they dreamt of is to serve Nigeria. Mm. Not because of any lifelong dream, but they just want to offer themselves to serve. They've identified the problems and they want to provide solutions. So as much as we have these different categories of uh, uh, people with fission driving them coming into the race, this time around, what we are seeing is even like the battle of the titans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, but the point there is, it's quite interesting. We're hearing that uh, even more people, some former governors and so on, uh, you know, want to contest. But we're hearing that some, other, uh, some others might even still declare their intention today, tomorrow, you know, at the course of the week. But do we need, as much as everyone has the right to contest, if you don't have any criminal this or that, you know, the, the few restrictions that the, the, the Constitution puts there, everyone has a right to contest. But do we need all of these people in true terms? Well, nobody can actually determine the number of candidates mm. in a democratic election. People have the right, the freedom to aspire 
for positions. Mm. So we can't say the candidates are too much or they are too few. Right. People have the constitutional right, if they have the desire for leadership, they have the right to step forward. Mm. But what is important is that the people, or even starting with the delegates within the parties, we determine who we'll get the ticket, mm. and then it will not come to Nigerians to decide who they want to vote for. I'm sure with time, more people will be dropping off. Mm -hmm. You know, we already had one governor uh, who has pulled out now, opting to go to the Senate. Mm -hmm. So there's not going to be any surprise anymore after the declaration of the vice president. Mm -hmm. The big guys are already out there within PDP and APC. Mm -hmm. So anybody that is joining today or tomorrow, they are welcome, but I'm not expecting any big surprise anymore because uh, the heavyweight are already out. Mm -hmm. They're already slugging it out. And uh, the FIPIS declaration has also changed the game within APC. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see a very dramatic days ahead for the competition within APCs, uh, for APC tickets. All right. L let's look at the dynamics of uh, rotational pres presidency that, oh, that we often, or the zoning that we often talk about. Now, we often talk about the issue of, or making references to the West. It doesn't matter where the president comes from and all of that. Of course, that, those are the ideals, you know, up there, the ideals of, okay, Come and deliver. That's what we want. We don't want to know if you are from there or from here or from. It shouldn't matter. But in politics, a lot of things shape the dynamics of how we play it. Our cultures, our religion, you know, all of those things, our region, because of the history of how we have evolved generally. Shouldn't that be something we should be? Or do you think that this will go away anytime soon? when we talk about where the president has to come from, because we're talking of it coming to the south right now. Power rotation in Nigeria has come to stay. Okay. Very, very, very sad to say that. But why is this sad? And because it's the reality of what is called Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The amalgamation of the northern and southern protectorates mm -hmm. has shaped the structure mm -hmm. of this country. Now, intertwined by religious forces, and cultural beliefs. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult. We've started with this way back from the 60s. Mm -hmm. Whatever system we practice, either it's the parliamentary, or it's the presidential, or any other one that comes tomorrow, mm -hmm. these factors seem to overwhelm them. And we cannot compare, because of our peculiarity, we cannot compare the kind of system that our democratic um, uh, dispensation will evolve mm -hmm. with what is obtainable in some countries in the West. This is the Nigeria, our own reality. And because of the agitations for power uh, control, resource control, security control, and what have you, Nigeria has gotten to that point where for peace to reign, there is this a thin line that is a divide that must not be crossed. If you want to sustain peace within this structure called Nigeria, federal character is at the heart of what is holding Nigeria right now. That is the sharing of position, sharing of power. Any day, any time this is jettisoned, we are in trouble. This is the Nigeria that we have today. I truly pray. And I believe one day we will grow above this. Mm -hmm. Then merit can come in. People can be elected based on their ability. But as it is today, and it's you know, the way it is now, we can see into the future that for a long time, it will still be rotation between the north and the south. Now, even this present government has not completed its, its, its own tenor to make it eight years. It's about seven years now. Mm -hmm. The agitation is fierce already. And that can tell you if a southerner gets in now in 2023 and is able to sustain his government for eight years, the agitation is coming by the expiration of his own 10 or 2 that mm. the power should go back to where <laughs> it came from. <laughs> so that, that, that's what it is. But what we can do as a nation where we have constitution, we've put this in our constitution that there will be federal character, everybody must be carried along. If we, as Nigerians, and the leaders can be faithful 
to the letters of this constitution, then we shouldn't be having a crisis. Hmm. So it's not really about what is practiced in the West. It's what is suitable for our country with the structure that we have today. The tribes that are inside Nigeria, we have over 200 ethnic tribes. Nigeria is a peculiar country. And we are unique in the world because with the 200 million people, we have a, a, a country that is divided between the Muslim and the Christian equally. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to really pander to uh, what democracy can do for us, we must respect all these divide lines. And that is where you see anybody who comes into Asurok as a president, if he's not careful, if he does not tread carefully, and if he, by mistake or omission, jump some of these divide lines, we see the country run into crisis. Hmm. There are certain elements within our structure that we have to be very careful with to sustain peace in this land. Okay. We, we often hear people talk about the issue, the need to select credible leaders. You know, it's time for elections right now, so everyone go and get your PVC so you can vote for credible leaders. The point there is credible leadership or a credible leader is not written on anybody's forehead to say this is, oh, fine, this one has credible leader on his forehead, so let's vote for. So how do we get a credible leader and what kind of a president are we looking at at a critical time like this? Well, I think um, one of the challenges confronting us is the level of poverty hmm. that has now made our people to be induced at every election, not to see their rights and not to really consider the future. And by the time the election starts now, you see at the polling unit how people will be collecting 5,000, 2,000. Uh, it's the matter of ISB that, you know, party to party, one party will offer this, another party will increase it. So until we get to that point where our people we begin to say no to this culture, we might still not be able to elect the right people into power because people are buying their way into political offices. So, and that's part of the challenge we've been facing before now. So that, that, that's, that's, that's at the heart of this whole thing. So if we can begin to address the poverty level, all the voters can begin to have independent mind. Pe people can begin to see what is at stake more than the rice and beans that's been shared during the campaign. All those things are going to start very soon. By the time people are done with the party primaries, you start seeing the candidates, you know, with the usual stunt, stomach infrastructure. So, but our people now need to realize this. See how far this present government has gone? How much of the difference have you seen in your life, in your businesses, even the state of the economy? People need to think. So when it comes to the issue of the leadership, as you said, mm. it's not written on the face. But people's antecedents also can guide the electorate. You know, this man was part of that team that destroyed the economy. That one was part of that government that promised to face power and they couldn't face it. Then why do you want to extend uh, another opportunity for him to come and do worse mm. and make things worse for the country? So people's antecedents, those who have been part of the, the looting regime, they, we can identify them. Those are not the people that we should be considering for another chance again. And we should get to that point where in our democracy, we should be punishing failure. Those who have been given a time to do certain, uh, to play certain role either as governor or as senator, and they didn't do well. We shouldn't be returning them. We should begin to punish poor performance. And that's how we can get our country hope. But you think, you think the, the, the electorates, <clears throat> who are the ultimate uh, uh, people with the power to make somebody become or not, their inability to make these choices, you think the, the blame lies on their table or on their hands? Well, we, we may not absolutely put this blame on the electorate. But uh, this is the doing of the political class. Hmm. This, this, this was built gradually. 
even before this uh, uh, democracy in 1999. Mm. This thing has been building over the years. Now it's, it's gotten to that point where the resistance is now looking impossible. Mm. The political class so desire this. They intentionally structure the system to be like this. It's at their favor as it is right now. So it will only take some dynamics of maybe some surprise element coming on in an election like this to turn this around. And you cannot ever place it here or there because we've seen it happening in some other countries, even in Africa. But the fact that we can say this system can be defeated, this system can be stopped, it will take a lot of work for it to be stopped as it is right now. Because some people actually stay banking on this to win election in mm -hmm. 2023. Mm -hmm. As it is right now, look at what is happening in PDP. The presidential uh, form is placed at 40 million, it's for the highest bidder. You know, so how many young people can afford to drop 40 million era to pick form within PDP for presidential race mm. right now? Now I can see that some of the candidates that managed to pick are already grumbling that P PDP should do something. This does not even portray the party well because some people inside PDP are already boasting that all of you can go to hell. I have the delegates, you know. And they know how to sort out and buy the delegates at the uh, primary. So as long as this culture continues, we might not be able to have the best and the most brilliant Nigerians emerging you know, uh, at the, the top to lead the country. So this is, these are the challenge. It's not that this system cannot be broken down. Mm -hmm. It is not that it cannot be defeated. It will take a lot of work. It will take some very rugged individuals a new breed without greed. Different political class coming up with consistency. Not this every one of uh, four years thing when election calendar comes on us. Mm. You know, we need that tenacity. And the people that will be able to do this, to pull this, this whole house of chariot down that has uh, captured the Nigeria's uh, political uh, uh, climate. It takes people who are totally different from these people, people who are clean. Hmm. Who have not soiled their hands with corruption? Wow. Now, the, where to get those persons from? Uh, I wouldn't know. But the point there is, but they are bound in Nigeria. Yeah, of course. We have we have a lot of them. You, you know, a lot of people. So it, it's just a matter people. of opportunity coming to them. Men, people women, identifying them. Yeah. But the point there is, that opportunity, of course, is not going to be thrown at you. Say, okay, uh, we, we go to Kitikbukba to pick someone, or we go to Tukbo to pick somebody, or to Boko, whatever the thing is, it's not going to be like that. You have, you have to be out there, you know, to, you know, to get it. Now, a situation where, recall, in the First Republic, when, in fact, we still see some of the videos that go viral of when Tafa Balewa travels to the United States or travels to the UK or travels to, you know, goes to the UN uh, General Assembly, the respect. Exactly. The, the, the expect, exactly. you know, the roll out the red carpets for uh, the Prime Minister of Nigeria at the time. You know, there, there's, Nigeria speaks for Africa at that time. Anywhere Tafa Balewa spoke, it was on behalf of the entire uh, African continent. And everyone looked up to Nigeria at the time. Now, the military came to, you know, take us back to this, almost to the state of nature, one way or the other, from what analysts have said. Uh, but if we have to start bringing back, because we have had it before, it's not like it's something strange. We had the formula before. We had the, the 1963 Republican constitution that spelled out a lot of things that, you know, were the days of the prosperity of Nigeria, what would it take to go back to the archives, dust all of those things, bring it back and say, hey, fine, this was the formula we had that time when everybody was making uh, reference to the fact that uh, if the, the Nigeria, the Naira was even higher than the dollar and things like that. How do we get back? What would it take to get back to that standard? We're very, very, very sad where we found ourselves now. Mm. Like the, this Tafa Balewa era you just mm. mentioned, looking like the golden era, true golden era of mm. Nigeria. And I remember then, even when he had state visits to the United States, mm. he addressed the U.S. Congress. Exactly. How many Nigerian leaders, presidents, mm. has gotten such opportunities since then? Because they do not present themselves in such manner in the international community. 
Nigeria then was a force to be reckoned with, not only in Africa, but globally. They were looking up to Nigeria. Our Naira had more value mm. than the British pound. Mm. Then, but now, where is Nigeria today? Look at this Ukraine and the Russian crisis. Look at all the global crisis, all the things. Where is Nigeria's voice? Nowhere to be found. It's unfortunate. Now, see where we are. We have leaders that people cannot beat their shares and say that these are people that are making this nation proud. These are leaders today that cannot face infrastructure, even including health infrastructure. They all run from the head down to governors from everywhere. They run abroad for medical treatments. There was a time in Africa when we had leaders like Tafa Balewa, Nkrumah, mm. Yere, and many of mm. them. It's a thing of shame if you cannot provide medical facilities, infrastructure for your people, mm. and you run out there to go and patronize one outside your country. It's a thing of shame. But where is the shame today? It's nowhere to be seen. People now do this bold face. We don't, they don't send us. They don't send the country. Where is the patriotism? So that's, that's the challenge we're facing today. We are now looking like our shadow as a country. But this is another chance again to go into another election. Mm. These are the things that our people must begin to look at, must begin to think about. I wish the First Republic was not terminated. Whatever the challenges we're facing then, we would have grown out of those mm. challenges with mm. time. Exactly. We would have evolved with a better system. Mm. But now, see where we are now. We are like in a system where some people within the political class have captured the system to their advantage. If you don't have money, if you don't belong to some cocos or kaba, you can't break in to go provide alternative leadership to help the country. So it's, it's, it's the, the race now is a matter of the highest bidders. Mm. People go into all these primaries. Even before primary day, they already know who the winner is. And somebody will put $5,000 down for delegates. And then the highest bidder will just come overnight and top everything and double it to $10,000. And then the dele delegate will be smiling to the, to uh, the banks. Uh, to the banks. Mm. So we need to get our country out of this. And the question that we've been talking about is, how can we get this done? Mm. This is another election now. Mm. And what are people need to begin to look at? What we are facing in Nigeria may look like facing the giant. The structure that looks like a pharaoh. But pharaohs, they usually fall. The giants usually fall. So that's why our people need to rise up. Going forward, we must still consider the alternative to the two major parties that we have. Mm. We must still consider alternatives. If Nigeria is going to get things right, we must still look for alternatives. And how we get there depends on Nigeria. All right. Now, let's, I, I'm glad you talked about this alternative that uh, we, we, to the two major political parties. We've had the PDP for 16 years. Now we've had the APC. Is, is our Nigerians happy at the end of the day the point there is that is left for Nigerians to answer. But when we talk about alternatives, it looks like so many of the political parties, you know, when they come up, for, the, for some of them who, that don't even have not won any election, but they are all needed within the system, everybody looks forward to fielding candidates, even for the presidency. Of course, there's, there's, a, there's a political party, ABGA. ABGA has decided to keep its... Uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's terrain within the southeast. And, and as, in fact, when it comes to Anambra State, for instance, how do we ensure that political parties are conscious enough to ensure that let us, let us work on ourselves at the grassroots, hold this place down before we begin to make advancement to another level? Well, I, I think... Just quickly part, before... Part of mm. where we have problem with this uh, alternative structure, imagine, is the fact that people are not ready to do the work. Mm. This is not the work of every four-year circle. Okay. This is the work that must start four, three years before election. 
people must begin to put themselves together. Those Nigerians who align in thought along this, this road, they must begin to put their resources together. Mm -hmm. Yes, people usually talk about the resources to make it happen is, is scarce. Okay. But when the determination is stronger, when people identify the fact that this is not about individual, mm. there are quite a number of people within the political elite that are already identifying that uh, with their years in PDP and uh, even APC, yeah. that those two parties may not be able to provide the leadership that can serve in Nigeria. But they are coming out. Some of them are coming out. Mm. I've seen quite a number of politicians now that have left uh, PDP embracing uh, the third force option, mm. uh, working with some about few parties to create another alternative. Okay. But what we should focus on is that it shouldn't be a thing of election circle okay. here. Uh, we, we should be working that. as much as possible, preparing after election, mm. start preparing the ground All right. for what can save Nigeria. All right. We, ha we have to leave it here now due to time, but we thank you so much, Dana Kinlami, for coming on the program this it's morning. It's my pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you.